Hello, and welcome back to Coolest Gamers Let's Play of Assassin's Creed Origins, part 25. In this video, we go back to kill that Nyeka shit Nyeka fucking Wacka Shaka Laka Maka fucking motherfucker, Eudoros, of course, because that is our mission after all. What would be we'd be doing if we weren't just killing motherfuckers, you know? At the end of the day, it's like, why'd you buy this game? Hunting simulator? Actually, I I I wouldn't blame you if that's why you bought it. The the hunting in this game is kind of it's kind of fun. So yeah, I was checking out that ability there, the enhanced predator bow. I end up picking that up later because kind of an amazing ability, being able to control predator arrows, like your Batman or some shit. I don't even know, like, what is their fucking physical explanation for that? Because I don't think that technology existed back then. I mean, I'll get behind Flesh Decay Toxin, Berserk Poison, Firebombs, Eternally Flaming Arrows. I'll get behind that. You know, maybe Bayek has, like, flint lined into the seams of his gloves, and every time he pulls out his arrow, he just, like, scratches the, the, the tip of it, and it just catches on fire. I'll buy that. But arrows that you can control, and also arrows that you can see where they're going somehow, I don't buy that. Like, did he have a drone camera? I, I don't fucking understand, man. When Batman does it, it makes sense, you know? Because Batman will fashion, you know, a radio out of a tin can. But... I just don't have the same context for this game, so... What else? The Stranger Things 2 review is going up tonight. I'll probably be staying up until around my bedtime. Putting that together. Gotta watch the last episode tonight. Doing a little pacing around the room. Had a few drinks. I won't lie. So we're heading into a sandstorm. That's the final boss. Everyone knows that. When you're in Egypt, the final boss is always a sandstorm. Doesn't matter how many problems you have, at the end of the day, you gotta deal with fucking sandstorms. We all know that. We all know that. <clears throat> I mean, this is really nice. This is a cool little thing, you know, riding through the sandstorms. is really makes makes the game worthwhile little moments like these I was actually shooting some footage today and there was a cat in this one dude's yard and I crouched down in front of it and after a few seconds Bayek starts petting the fucking cat I'm like dude game of the year 2017 2018 2019 all years really because you got to pet a cat You know, I, I, I take immense joy out of being a gamer, uh, of course. But at the end of the day, petting a pet, that's what it's all about. I miss having dogs. I wish I could have a dog here for you guys so you could hear a little little rough, little growling. I could play around with my dog. He could be a little character on the show. So I get accosted by bandits again, trying to leave this place. I didn't realize I actually did have a fast level point in Alexandria. Man, I was running. What are you talking about? Know how to use that. The horse? I like this Stranger Things-esque kind of like retro wave sounding music here. I don't mean I don't know why it's there. Egyptian retro wave and whatnot, but 
I dig it. I have said that the royal scribe is often at the bathhouse. I will kill that. Kill that yak 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 there's so many syllables just to say piece of shit. <sighs> oh, this is an isolated desert. We promise there won't be anyone here. No way. No way. I should have my Stranger Things review up tonight. Um, I got a new subscriber last night, so hello to my new subscriber. Thank you for subscribing. It's these little steps that really make my day-to-day -day doing this very, very rewarding. When people come up to the plate and they give me support, I love that shit. But because I have to watch Stranger Things, there's a chance that this buzz is going to turn into a full-on fucking drunk by the time I'm finished with that last episode. Because I really don't like the show. I mean, people can like it all they want, but I just think it's one of those overhyped things. I actually compared it with a friend of mine last night to... Better Call Saul. It's one of those shows that doesn't seem to have a very clear-cut genre, but is nonetheless rabidly popular. Man, bandit problems. I think this video is stretched out in length just due to fucking desyncs from those motherfuckers. I mean, they definitely got some good loot off of me, but I seem to have entered an alternate universe wherein I regain all of my gear, and they don't have any of it. Some Rick and Morty shit, it would take a very high IQ to understand. Uh, let's give a shout out to my new subscriber. Because I always appreciate when people make any effort whatsoever to give me support. I mean, you don't have to watch my videos. It doesn't even matter to me. When I see that little notification on my Windows 10 that says you have a new subscriber, my heart leaps for joy. So, I'd like to give a shout out to my boy Menea Petculescu. I assume that's Romanian. Uh, he checked out my part 24 last night and uh, asked me if the Animus was still a thing. To address that, I have no idea. I mean, I know that we have this jury-rigged Animus that Layla Hassan is using to try and, you know, what's the word, like, get into a position with the Abstergo Industries. But, I mean, that's about all I know. I haven't played Assassin's Creed since Assassin's Creed 3, so I really have no clue as to where the story went. Although I do know from reading the files in Layla Hassan's computer that the Animus Portable is a thing now, and that Layla was the one who proposed a six-directional claw that would hold the animus user and allow them to move in like a three-dimensional space which i'm pretty sure is just a direct reference to the movie where in michael fassbender you know jumps and leaps around a fucking room on a dorky ass claw thing you know it was a horrible movie from what i heard so i i did not bother to watch it kind of like king's glaive it's just like why why we don't need that we don't need a movie. It's 
So I make my way to Alexandria, and I find the Temple of Sekhmet in Yamu. And here is located the precocious little pre-teen merchant known as Retta. And Retta is essentially your Tess Everest, if you play Destiny, of this game. In that he's the one that will direct you to the online microtransaction market. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Because your back in these you can lines. buy drachmas you are but a boy. with real money in order to buy Lamps loot boxes the in the game. The I refuse to spend money on loot boxes, though, because I get good they equipment all the time in this game. Nubian all the time. Jewels, so I really don't see the point of buying the loot boxes, gold. especially because it's random. You are well traveled for such a and I mean, yeah, it's a rare or a legendary I weapon or shield, but long nights in the desert with my it's not worth my drachmas, you know. Like I, I I'm gonna need to Look buy raw material at some point. I'm gonna need to buy too. new weapons. I'm gonna need to buy specific things, and I'd rather save my drachmas for those specific things. You know what I mean? So it's important to me that I, I don't participate in this. I mean, I would never be tempted to use my real money on anything other than the deluxe pack, of course, because, you know, it kind of really smooths the game over and gives you these sweet outfits and horses and shit. But one of the things he does is he gives you a daily quest. Go out and basically complete an objective at a little enemy location. And he gives you free shit for doing that. So that's worthwhile. Absolutely. From what I can tell, all the deluxe item stuff, all the stuff that got preloaded in the game due to extra features are not saleable. Um, I realize a little too late that I can sell unnecessary items with a simple hold of the down pad. Down direction on the directional pad. Did not phrase that all too well. But I haven't even used Drachmas at this point in the game. Like, I, I'm probably... I probably filmed enough for about 40 parts already. And I still have not bought anything with Drachmas. I really just don't see the point. You get enough shit just playing the game. Just doing the quests. Just killing the dudes. That there's... The money is... At this point, at least, so far as I've gotten, pretty useless. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. So we'll go and do that daily quest for him. Nishharet <laughs> Akudu. Reading a book right now for my colonizer and colonized class called Madonna of Excelsior by some dude named like Mada. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. His last name is M D A, and it's a fantastic book. It really is. It's a very, very good book. It's about the South African situation in 1971 in the the city or township of Excelsior. And, I don't know, taking this class at the same time that this game came out and I started this Let's Play, it's really resonated with me. And, um, there are actually some details coming up in the series that will reveal kind of the imperialistic situation of the Greco-Roman occupation and, you know, the native Egyptian people, the native African, North African people. So, I mean, this shit fascinates me. I think that Africa as a setting for a video game is absolutely fantastic. I know that MGS5, The Phantom Pain, did it. Um, but, I mean, I'm not sure if they connected as deeply with history. I mean, that was a game that was set in the 80s, and I'm not sure it's really as extensive. But I haven't gotten very far in that game, so feel free to correct me. What I've always loved about this series is its attention to historical detail. I mean, yes, it's historical fiction, but... 
it's very interesting to play the to play out the fantasy, if you will, of meeting Cleopatra and Apollodorus and Thanos the Younger and all the all these characters who were important at this time. I think it's like 47 BCE, Egypt. I mean, it's really cool. It's really cool. I, I, I kind of live for this shit. And like the renderings of the architecture and everything. I mean, this game, it took them two years to make it. And a lot of times the effort does show. However, when it comes to the artificial intelligence of the opponents in this game, not so much. Not very much at all. No, no, they're pretty dumb. They're pretty dumb. And even the animal AI, the predator AI, leaves something to be desired. Uh, so I got spotted trying to come into this camp. I'm just gonna take on all the bandits like a bounce with this uh, scepter I'm trying out. I got the berserk. I'm gonna use that now. There is an ability that I think only works with fast weapons. Which is the Berserk Light Attack combo. After you successfully land an attack in Berserk mode, you can spam R1 to do a Light Attack combo and kind of hold down the enemy. Another one that I get is uh, when you kill an enemy in Berserk mode, you can press R1 afterwards to throw his weapon at another opponent, which is quite nice. I like these finishing animations. Ritter's task is done. They're pretty cool. I look like I'm wielding a bow staff or something, so that was neat. I hope you guys are enjoying the vids. I'm starting to get into the groove of this game. It's starting to become really enjoyable for me. I'm hoping that, without sounding too much of a chill, this game is appealing to people who watch it, because it really is quite a fun time. Sometimes you just want a, a, a treasure chest. You don't want to put anything in it. You know, you just want it. It's a nice little piece of uh, a nice little keepsake. It's like, you know, when, when Jesse made the, the, the box for his carpentry professor. You know, sometimes, sometimes you got to appreciate a nice box in life. No, I did not intend that as a double entendre, but take it however you like. I mean, I'll enjoy a nice box, if you know what I mean. You know, put some wood polish on it. Grease up the hinges. You know, put some Danish finish on it. You know, like... Ooh, that really gets me going. So, we went ahead and did this little daily quest for Ritta, and I believe he gives us a legendary item today. We get lucky. I'm not sure if it's a good legendary item. The problem with a lot of gear in this game is that it's locked to the level, so you'll end up replacing a legendary item in a level or two with a rare item or even lesser because it's just not worth holding on to for the sake of its loot rank when it has inferior damage. However, the difference in tiers are that legendaries typically have three to four traits. I think rares typically have like two to three, and uh, an uncommon, the blue colored one, has one or two traits. So. Yeah, I got the uh, legendary light bow. This is my fire light bow. It's, an, it's a nice bow. I, I like using it. 